Hello, all you psychological fanatics out there. Don't smile too hard because I have such a phenomenal guest being today. Today, I am talking to Peter Jacobson, who plays Morris for the new psychological thriller, Smile 2. I've already spoke before the interview started. I'm just a horrible fan. I have not seen the movie yet because I'm just coming back from my honeymoon. And I'm just a... I have no excuse. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm out of here. I, you're, what? Come on, get with it, man. There's like there's a three fifteen today. Go. That's already passed. Right, Four thirty depends on what time zone you're in. All right, fine. It's a six fifteen. Go. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Huge fan of you and your work. Um, thank you. Found you a long time through the house series, et cetera, et cetera. But we're here today to talk to you about your role as Morris in Smile Two. So. In my opinion, Smile 2 is very unique and improves on the conceit of the original by making the stakes bigger, more entertaining, and many times more torturous to watch play out to the inevitable end. <laughs> so I'm excited to see it, which is this is this interview is going to torture me, literally, because I have no idea what happens. I've only seen what happens in the previews. So, it's the trailer. Be exactly what you just read. It's going to be that. So you're good. Nope. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I really am. I love. I love the first one, and I was surprised that they actually came out with the sequel because I didn't think it was going to happen whatsoever, and I thought they were going to just stop at one. So, without further ado, please give me a warm welcome to Peter Jacobson. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? <laughs> Mr. Honeymoon, congratulations. Thank you. It's a good honeymoon. We stayed four days in the cabin, which every scenario in a horror movie can be played out. Oh, my God. You can think yeah. of the, the cabin. Cabin in the woods. In the, woods. In the, up in the mountains. So. Okay. All right. That's not for everybody, <laughs> but good for you. I was expecting someone to jail in, 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 in a hockey mask to pop out of the uh, tree of the city at one point. Right. But I was kind of, kind of disappointed it didn't happen. So, okay. well, you have yet you can have your encounter with Smile Two, and that'll be your freak out for the month. Yes. So, if you could please tell us a little bit about yourself and how your Paramount acting career started. I mean, the, in the Paramount meaning in being in Smile or my acting career. I mean, do you want to? You don't want to know about my life. Do you want to know about how I got into Smile, or or maybe you do want to know about? How about how you actually career started and then how you got in the smile? How about that? Well, then, okay, so it's about through me with the Paramount thing because it's the Paramount film and I've been no. hashtagging Paramount picks because I'm new to social media and I'm like, Paramount, Paramount, Paramount. Okay, but it also has a greater meaning. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I started out acting uh, when I was in school, uh, high school, college, was really into it, loved it, loved the theater, doing plays all the time, uh, auditioned for a graduate program, acting program at Juilliard in New York, and was lucky enough to get in. That was four more years after college, so I was in school studying acting very intensely until I was, I was 26 years old, I still had a locker. Um, that's sort of how stunted my growth was, but uh, I was learning how to be an actor. And then I, uh, so I stayed in New York after that and spent seven or eight years basically just going from play to play, doing theater um, and living that world and slowly getting film, small film roles and smaller t small TV roles, but the TV roles began getting bigger and bigger and more frequent. And I stayed in New York and sort of commuted to Los Angeles. I mean, now they shoot things everywhere. Um, you know, you, back then it really was either New York or LA and TV was really all LA. So I was doing a lot of back and forth. And uh, then I got into a few shows, especially House, that uh, really sort of changed the game for me a bit. And, uh, you know, that was a big, beautiful, lovely experience. <laughs> Five years on a show. On a hit show like that, with that kind of writing and those actors, it was just a great experience. And um, and since then, I've been doing lots more TV, and I'm in a bit of a film drag now, which is great. Uh, Smile was uh, just an awesome experience. I don't usually my my experience has been more on TV, which is a longer, drawn out episode to episode. You get to really sort of play with the character over time. Um, film is, you know, for me, it was a bunch of days as Morris. There's a solid script. It's, it's, you know, it's 120 pages and my lines are there and that's what I play and you shoot it over some time and then you're done and then you don't see it again. Now I'm seeing it. it's like we're, it's doing so well. The, it's the number one movie in America this weekend. And that's, I, uh, I, 
it's beaten Terrifier three, which I'm, I'm sorry, Dave and Leon. Terrifier three couldn't go so far, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I think the smile three is uh that that could go somewhere. I think uh, the smile, the whole idea is so good. I think it has life beyond even. Okay, so what I've read on the internet, and I do this once in a while, I, I like to read ahead before I, I'll go watch a movie in the theaters, which is bad on my part. It's like spoiling everything for me. Um what I get from reading about your character, Morris, is that he is a mysterious outsider who has connection with this terror and has crossed paths with it in the past. Uh, but you try to convince Sky, you can, you try to convince you can help her. And aside from that, from your own perspective, is there anything else you can tell us about your character, Morris? <laughs> well, that, I think you, whoever wrote that was also quite, uh, quite astute. That's, yeah, no, that's a pretty clean explanation. Uh, that is what, ha that's the essence of uh, why I'm there. Um, What's unique about Morris in the film, you know, that it's a movie about this pop star and her world is, you know, is very, uh, is extreme and it's heightened. And, uh, and that's what's so great actually about going from Smile One to sort of raise the stakes and sort of supercharge and boost the film and the stakes and the experience. It's on a much broader scale. But Morris himself is just this sort of like schleppy guy who's, been through the ringer with this terror he's survived it's not hit him but he's obsessed with it and researched it but he looks and sounds like he's been in a cave trying to figure out this terror and then he crosses paths with sky gets her to come listen to him and they you know uh, they have a very intense you know i really try to try to help her figure out what's going on and i have an idea of how to save her and save humanity from this thing and uh I'll let you see whether or not it happens. Um, but yeah, but what's unique, what's great about Morris is that unlike a lot of the sort of the sort of more highfalutin characters of the film, all of them were beautifully played by really a tremendous cast uh, of people who are in sort of, you know, in Sky's orbit, which is a more fancy, you know, this guy is, you know, he's he's a little bit down and out. He's uh, in the dumps pit. So that's very, very well explained explanations of the your guy. Because <laughs> the read also wants to say your character looks looks a little rugged, like a caveman, like you said. But you know, <laughs> just just trying to. I mean, I, mean I, I think if that were to happen to me, I would have a hard time wrapping my head around that. I mean, oh yeah, trying well, to figure out why. That's the beauty yeah. of, of acting. I mean, you know, I don't usually get that. Normally, I'm in a coat and tie, you know, suit, you know, in the law office. So I, it's the, these circumstances and this character and this atmosphere of the film has not been what I usually play. So that was part of what really, really drew me to this. I just love getting to do that and to lean into that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's, you know, he's, um, he's not, uh, he's not a happy man at this point. And he's just sort of stuck in, in this, you know, in the muck here. And, uh, and that's what's great about it. So can you begin? Okay, um, I don't think you can tell us how you got involved with this movie. Did you explain how you got involved with the movie? Did I? I um, I, yeah, I just auditioned for it, and I saw the the role, uh, the script, and read the role, and uh, thought it was just a great. Again, I just love everything about him, and uh, so I did my audition tape. And you know, now since COVID, everything is done remotely, so you rarely meet anybody in person anymore, um, and. Uh, so, uh, but they liked what they saw. And then I had another meeting on Zoom with Parker, the director and uh, the producers and casting people and did my thing. And I, they thought I'm the guy. So there I was. So that's 120, simple. <laughs> 120 pages of script, man. Jesus. <laughs> well, I think the average film is about 100, average script is about 120 pages. But this one packs a punch. That's a, it's a very intense 120 pages. So and that, that's well, that was, uh, like a follow up question. Like, um, how intense was it on set? I mean, I, I can't imagine what it'd be like, you know, trying to convince someone that, hey, this thing's after you, but I have experience with this thing and I can help you. And it seems like she's not listening to your character. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you're acting. So, and it's, you know, you're, none of my stuff is with the terror itself. It's not, you know, there's not. I'm not being pursued, so I'm not in that zone. Um, but it was a very intense, you know, informational scene, and 
and uh, Naomi Scott, who plays Sky, is just so tremendous in this part. I mean, she came just loaded and ready to go. I mean, you know, she's going 100% in this. And at the point in the movie, when I come on, she is fully terrified. It is, you know, she's obsessed. She doesn't know what's real, what's not. Is she mentally ill? What is happening? People are dying. This thing is freaking her out. So her level of intensity on set was fantastic. So it was great to sort of arrive on set and be in that zone with her. And it made the playing the scene really easy and fun. It was very dark. Um, all our locations were dark and, you know, uh, and I can't reveal too much about what happens in the scenes, but there's, it's creepy and, uh, and it's dark and it's hard to hit your mark and you don't want to, you know, mess up the camera shot and make everybody late for lunch. And so that was scary. Um, but, uh, you know, you're not, I'm not like scared, scared, like in the movie, I'm acting, I'm working, but, um, but what's so fun about it is that I got to play these great scenes with her where she's just losing her shit and she's so good in it and uh you know i get to try to help her and we're in that relationship and it was just a blast see now I'm, i might just call out sick tomorrow at work to go watch this movie in the theaters i can't Girl, wait another yeah. day <laughs> yeah, no, and nobody. I might even want to be very clear. You, I'm hoping it'll have a big, long streaming life because nothing lasts forever in the theaters, and that'll be sweet for people who've just come back from a honeymoon, maybe, and they want to sit on the couch with their their new wife and watch. But I'm telling you, go see it in the theaters. Experience the group terror. You want that? Absolutely. I mean, that's what makes it more fun to watch is the other people's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> So if this is anything like the first one, there are some wild practical effects. And every character undergoes some pretty intense scenes or situations. What was it like filming some of those wilder scenes? Well, again, I, I mean, there's some pretty crazy scenes in this. I mean, again, Parker has done such a masterful job of taking... You know, it's hard. Look, this is a very the, the horror genre. It's pretty saturated. It's hard to break through with something new, and he did that with Smile. It's very unique. So then to do that is hard enough. But then to say, all right, we're going to do a sequel. We're going to do it again and bigger and better. I mean, that's ballsy, and he's just amazing. And they've done it, and he did a great job, and it's it's doing beautifully. So, uh, and part of what makes this one exciting is that a lot of those scenes, there's a lot of really crazy effects and scary stuff going on again i didn't get to experience the most intense stuff but um you know being on a it's different walking on to the set of house than walking on the set of smile too uh you know the the lighting is different the crew is different it's you know what you're in and i was like oh i'm in a horror movie here this is intense um i and i was wishing that i you know could like more like my friend cal penn who was in house with me he was in the first smile and his character like his whole face gets ripped off and you know um and i when i saw it i was laughing so hard and i unfortunately i don't get to do that but uh so i'll have to ask him how fun that was for him but uh that's you know you that, that's the fun stuff right here so i did read on the internet it's like your character more like has like medical knowledge is that true yeah, yeah. Oh, he well, he's a he's an ER nurse, and um, so he's very intelligent, and he's obsessed with this terror, and he has spent his life and recent life just learning everything he can about it. And he's the resident expert on this thing, so he's trying to help Sky stop it, and it uh, will require um, a executing a theory, a medical theory that um, that's pretty bold, and. Uh, He's got to convince her to go for it. But that comes with a whole lot of knowledge. I'm calling my boss right now to call out work tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to be the yeah, work I'm tomorrow because I have to go watch this movie. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> so, so what was it like working alongside Naomi Scott? I see other big names like Drew Barrymore. I'm like, I didn't, did not expect her to see this movie whatsoever. And is what, what's Naomi Scott like? Is she fun to work with? She's terrific um i didn't know her before i knew you know some of her work um and uh you know it's she it's well it's not rare i know a lot of really wonderful actors who are wonderful people um that's actually pretty common and she's one of them she is uh i just didn't like the intensity with which she that she has to carry to carry this film is amazing i know in the first one Sosie bacon you know she spends two hours in a state of total 
manifesting increasing terror and that's a difficult thing to do and again it's like through the roof in the sequel here and naomi just is unbelievable it's a truly truly huge performance she is she she is carries that terror all the way through which we need to follow and at the same time there's so there's such a humanity to her that it's so real and it's so authentic that that's what's terrifying you know it's not just about the jump scares and the effects it's like Here's a real human being, even though she's somebody we can't really relate to because she's a pop star, but she's such a human being and she's so she's so real and so simply authentic that the terror that she's going through affects us that much more. That's what makes a movie scary when is when you've got real people in real situations, even if the situations are extreme. You're relating to them as human beings. And Naomi is just she's just tremendous. And to top it off the nicest person in the world. I mean, she just couldn't have been more generous. It's hard. You know, I was coming in a little bit later in the film. She'd been going and, you know, you're, I'm getting introduced and we have to sit down and we have this long scene to play. And she was just loves to work and she's all about the work and her work is terrific. And she's a generous actress and a, just a lovely, lovely woman. It was great fun. And really her, I mean, I did five years on house. I, I know when an Englishman, has pulled off an authentic American accent more than most. And Naomi is an English woman who has pulled off an incredibly authentic American accent. I, I was like, wait, wait, you're British? What? what? You're good. <laughs> they do that very well, a lot of these guys. Oh, God. But, okay. I really can't wait to see this movie. This is this is driving me crazy. I mean, I want to get up right now and just leave, but I can't do that. It'd be really rude if I did. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'll, I'll take over. I'll, 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 who do we got next? <laughs> So the obviously the goal of, of this movie is to scare the audience. Um, however, in your opinion, is there a meaningful message behind that you hope people can, people can take away from this movie? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, the goal is to scare the audience, but I, I think the greater goal is to is that this. I mean, again, you there are different ways of scaring an audience. You can. You know, it's and there are a lot of movies out there that are just about the shock and the jump scare and uh, the gore. Um, the best scary movies, I think, are the ones that, as I was just alluding to, have a real humanity to them and are real people and situations that we can relate to, and are we feel like we're really with them, experiencing this. And uh, and Naomi again pulls that off miraculously and beautifully. Um, but it's also, you know, her journey in the film is somebody who who is, you know, the terror and smile is this sort of, the, the hook is this basic human thing of a smile. We all, I mean, all six billion of us on the planet know what that is and we, it's what we do. And yet it's twisted into something mysterious and scary and terrifying and dangerous. And that's a great hook. And that's what gets us scared. And then there's the lack of clarity about what's really happening and what's not is not is Sky's character experiencing something for real, or is she imagining it? Because this terror is very amorphous, and she doesn't really know what it is. So there are all these question marks, and what happens as a result is that she goes bonkers. And um, so, if there's a greater back to the question, if there's a greater message or idea than just being scared, I think it's what happens through Naomi's performance and just sort of the 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 narrative of the film is is how, how does somebody handle mental illness how does somebody handle just going crazy like what's it like to not believe yourself not to believe what you see not to believe your friends and your mother your family if like if what is isn't what does that do to your brain and so watching naomi go through that so believably and terrifyingly it's it's fun to be scared and it's a real it's a real scary experience but there's something i think it's hitting people in a, in a, you know, people are liking it because, again, it's like it, it, it hits us in a place that we understand. Like, that's a real terrifying thing. What, who can I really trust and who can't I? And what does that do to you mentally? And it is authentically experienced through Naomi's performance. So that's that's what's lovely about the film. Which also brings us to another subject. Um, I am a combat veteran, so I do suffer from PTSD. And oh. you just what you said is I've experienced that several times coming back from deployments and it's yeah. just it's like going out in public so who can i trust who's the yeah. enemy who's gonna who's gonna do what to me you know it's scary i get it so and and, and i think that i can relate to that 
<laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, that's, that's, uh, you know, I'm, I th thanks for sharing that. That's, that's very, um, that's, it's amazing to, to hear. It's just good for people to talk about it, I think. And for, to hear you very openly and honestly say that that's your experience as, you know, we all have different levels of, of stress and trauma and anxiety. Yours is obviously on a whole nother level that almost nobody else can understand. And, you know, your bravery for being back in the world and, and, and finding, you know, and, and, and living your life and, and, and having to deal with that. And we all have our ways of dealing with it, large and small. And so it's interesting that you can relate in that way. And I'm guessing everybody who sees this movie can relate. Humans, we, we relate to pain and fear and, 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 and not knowing if it's okay. I guess that's the most basic human experience. And again, yours is, is, you know, is intensified from your very terrifying experience, you know, in combat. And I can only imagine what that's like. I bring my own, you know, neuroses and anxieties. So when I'm in that theater, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm carrying my own, my own, no reason, my own reasons for being scared, but that's what's wonderful about being in a theater. We're all saying, okay, not only am I willing to go do this, I'm going to do it with other humans. I'm going to pay money to do it. And we're all going to bond in a way over this. And I think it's a, it's, it's a real important part of being human is, you know, dealing with those fears. Exactly. And luckily I have a loving wife and four dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Make sure the dogs aren't making it harder. <laughs> no, dogs are great. I love dogs. My God, that's the best thing in the world. So a few questions I'd like to ask um, actors who will interview. Um, who are your biggest influences when it comes to acting? Good question. Um, I mean, I grew up loving, I mean, I grew up seeing, starting to see movies in the 70s, which were, you know, many we say is the golden era of cinema. I mean, there really were some of the most fabulous films made um these gritty realistic movies that you know robert de niro and dustin hoffman and pacino those guys in the 70s were those were my heroes when i was you know jack nicholson uh when i was getting interested in acting um just the 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 authenticity and the the grit and, and you know the reality that they brought again the humanity the willingness to sort of really just go places emotionally that was fascinating to watch. So those guys, you know, I mean, and they came on the heels of Marlon Brando and, you know, who really sort of set the tone for that. I mean, you know, these actors all stand on each other's shoulders. Today, I think that you've got guys like, you know, Joaquin Phoenix and Christian Bale are, to me, stand out as two of the more intense, you know, Sean Penn before them, guys who really commit and who are, who draw incredibly real sympathetic characters with such a humanity. I'm just talking about men because those are the ones I instinct, instinctively relate to. Um, there are so many comedians I'm, I love. I grew up on Steve Martin uh, and I love him and his acting. And one of my contemporaries and the person I know and have worked with who I just think is a tremendous actor is Paul Giamatti. He's just somebody who's, there's a simplicity um, and an honesty that I, I find is it's weirdly elusive. And yet he's just so in it. Um, and so it's so easy. And I guess the one that my favorite of all time, who was definitely the older generation, who I had the, uh, the opportunity to work with on a film long ago, just to be around him was Robert Duvall, who, uh, I don't know, he's, every role he's ever played, there's, it, it, and to be with him and to, to watch him do it in person, Again, simplicity and like you don't even see him doing anything. It's like, wait, are you making choices? Are you acting? What are you doing? It's so real. It's so honest. It's so effortless. And then you see it on the screen and it's like, wow, that character blows my mind. I, I am fully, fully engrossed in who you are and I believe who you are. And that is, it's a rare talent. And there have been a bunch. Those are the ones that pop into my head about who I've loved and followed and emulated or tried to. You know, hoped, wished. I love Robert. I, I love Robert De Niro. I mean, he's such a great actor. Um, he, have you seen him in Ronin, the movie Ronin, where he plays no. like a super 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 spy kind of movie? Oh, he cool. does such an excellent role. It's a really good movie. It's an, it's an action movie, yeah. and it's so cool to watch. Every time it comes on TV, or I have to watch it. Yeah. So I love those movies when you're just like, "Oops, that's something I got to see." And guys like De Niro. What I also, as a character actor myself, the guy, the guys that I love the most are the ones who play just a wild variety of different roles. I mean, they bring so many different angles of humanity to their work. It's just, that's exciting. Like Goodfellas, um, Midnight Run. 
And oh, in that run. That's a good movie. I love Midnight Run. One of the run. great comedies. I haven't seen it in 10 years. And I wonder if it still holds up. I'm guessing it does. Charles Grodin. Those two, I'm still recite lines from that movie. That I could. That's one of the ones. I'll see it no matter what. That is a great movie. I'll give you two words. Shut the... One, two, three, three. That's oh, yeah, I got two words for you. Shut the blank up, which are four words. It's just so funny. Yeah, it's one of those movies that come on. I'm like, oh, we gotta watch that movie too because yeah. it's just so good. I mean, it's great. Well, again, I mean, De Niro just... doing something that we didn't know. I mean, he's always a tough guy, but he's it's just so funny. Although Charles Grodin, that movie doesn't work without Charles Grodin. That dry comedy. I mean, he's just fantastic. Because I knew he had money, but I didn't. He had money. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, but definitely check out Ronan. It's such a good action flick. It's got um sure. Rob Dino, Sean Bean, um, an Irish actress, I can't remember her name. It she, they're all good actors. Um aside from all this stuff, are there any projects or upcoming films that you're allowed to talk about? Um, I just finished an indie film uh a few weeks ago shooting in Colorado, which I can't really talk about. And I'm working here, I'm here in New York to work on another film tomorrow, which I can't really talk about, but I'm working on it, you know, and that's great. Um, but right now I'm all about smile too, and uh you know, plug in that because it really uh, is really a good plug. It's you know sometimes you plug things and you're like, well, I don't know if I really would want to go. And there are people I like. My family's like, oh, we got to go see it. And I'm like, I, I don't want if if you get if you get too scared if you don't like scary movies, you're going to be scared. So I can't be like, yes, you got to go. But I have no problem saying to everybody else, just go see this movie. It's great. I for one am very looking much forward to seeing it in the theater. Because, like I said, coming back from honeymoon, I had to put all my plans on the back burner, and now I'm back. I can go see it. <laughs> so, <laughs> number one priority when re-entering life is to go see Smile Two. Exactly. So that's all the time we have. I want to thank you very much for coming on my show today. I really appreciate you taking the time, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the talented, the wonderful, the gifted Peter Jacobson. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you a prosperous future and an awesome career. And yeah, I, I can't thank wait you. to see you on the big screen. All right. Thank you. Good luck to you too. Thanks very much. All right. All right. You have a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye.